deeper reason than we understand why we were taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad not to carry or possess weapons of any kind. It was not to punctify us, but to strengthen us. See, when you are a God, meaning force and power, you rely on your will and your ability to make your thought a reality. Do you know you can perceive people coming up on you from blocks away if your brain is not soaked with chemical marijuana? All action is preceded by thought. And whoever has a superior thought is going to implement superior action. But Fred Hampton, 1969. And of course, the police said, well, they shot at us. No, he was asleep in his bed. But this was the FBI, Cook County State's Attorney's Office, and the Chicago police together conspired to assassinate him. Now, when the Nation of Islam began to grow, there were some of us, and I think there's some of us now, that's why I brought up Fred Hampton. You are drawn to Islam because it is your nature. You are drawn to discipline because by nature you love it. You are drawn to doing right and being right and being God, but you have an emotional attachment to this white man and the ways of his world. And you think that little gun that you have, that little knife that you have is gonna do something for you. But you've never used it on a real enemy. You've only used it on your brother and sister. So we've been around the enemy so long, we've become like them. And that's why you have a savage beast like Rudy Giuliani come on television and say to Michael Eric Dyson, well, if you people weren't committing crimes all the time, we wouldn't have to come in your neighborhood. No, you're not going to come in our neighborhood, period, in a few days. Now, but I'm saying to us, we have to stop this. This savagery that we are indulging in, male and female. I was in a store and I heard a sister say to a toddler, this was two days ago, she's the grandmother. She's got on the little camisole, the underwear, all of this out, tattoos right here. And the child did something and she said, if you do that again, I'm gonna slap the you know what out of you. So what do you, we expect from the youth is what I'm saying. And why do we call our children they and them? And why would we go on television and join forces with the enemy against our own children and then say, they don't like us, they don't respect us. Respect yourself. Children don't do what they're told, they do what they see. And we're allowing them too much exposure to God's enemy. See, this is God's enemy. He is unnatural, he's a freak, he's a socio and psychopath at once. Homicidal maniac. And we're picking all of that up. Lastly, 1985, MOVE. MOVE was developed in uh, 1972, Philadelphia-based Black Liberation Group. And they had like a communal type of lifestyle. They had some run-ins with the Philadelphia police because neighbors would complain that the MOVE members, and they're pretty vocal, they would be out with bullhorns uh, at all hours, uh, railing on racism. And so they were arrested for various crimes like parole violation, contempt of court, illegal possession of firearms, here we go. 
making terrorist threats, etc. They were evicted from the house they lived in, and there was a fight between them and the police when the police tried to move them out. Naturally, the police came like they you seen them come in Baltimore. And move is like, well, we're not having it. They fought back, fired back. The commission, George Sambor, ordered the bombing of the compound. Now we can talk about Tulsa in the 1920s, but that wasn't the end. It's 85, not 1885, 1985. A Pennsylvania state police helicopter dropped two one-pound bombs made of FBI supplied water gel explosive, which is a substitute for dynamite, and dropped it on top of their house in the middle of the city of Philadelphia. The resulting explosions ignited a massive blaze that eventually destroyed 65 homes. The firefighters who had earlier hosed, they call it deluge hosing, like they did in the civil rights movement, when the MOVE members had resisted eviction Firemen from Philadelphia had come and just deluged them with water, and that hurts. Water, water from a water uh, fire hose is very powerful, forceful, and it's like being stabbed with eight million knives. They had done that. The same firemen stood by and watched this inferno caused after this military-grade C4 bomb engulfed the first house refusing to intervene. 11 people died in the fire, five adults plus the uh, head of the organization, John Africa, and five babies died in the resulting fire. If you don't know about MOVE, Minister Louis Farrakhan, as always, came to their defense, went to Philadelphia, brought them to Chicago, as always. He's like Superman. He is a Superman. He's an ordinary man, but he's a Superman because he's backed by two superpowers. You understand? That's what it's about. Now we're gonna close real quick. We're gonna close, almost 12. We know by now, so I can skip a lot of this. I just wanna say, you know, with the Save Our Girls event, which was phenomenal, phenomenal. Minister Farrakhan's message, I think is still available on NOI.org. But one of the things that the minister has been teaching for decades from his father is free the woman. <laughs> free her allow her to rise as high as her God given gifts will allow her why because it is a universal law that a nation can rise no higher than its woman so I'm just I just have to say that after President Obama has been so equivocal when it comes to us. And you're not equivocal about sending drones over into Africa and dropping bombs on babies. But when we are being gunned down and lynched in the city streets of America, all you can say to us is, it's inexcusable for you to loot. It's inexcusable for you to engage in violence. Do you know this country was born out of a revolution, out of a war with the crown of England?
when they dumped all of the tea in the Boston Harbor in a protest against taxes being levied by King George. What was that? They, they burned up a CVS pharmacy, the local licensed drug dealer. The local licensed drug dealer. So when you free the black woman, this is what happens. On Friday, May 1st, 2015, Maryland State Attorney Marilyn Mosby announced to the shock of everyone Cause see, sometimes it takes a sister to step up and say, this is some. Okay. We done had enough of this. Help me. We back our man. I was in my car on my way to a meeting at the National House with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and other people concerning the upcoming event in October. And remember, 10, 10, 15. As Mr. T said, I pity the fool that can't remember that. 10, 10, 15. <laughs> but let me, let me just say this. I'm in, in the car and they broke. State's attorney is holding a press conference. They're going to make an announcement. So I'm waiting for the usual. We can't do that. Man. <laughs> and the next thing I hear is this young sister voice. And she goes through the events of that day line by line. Now, I'm a former prosecutor myself. I was an assistant district attorney in New York. I've been telling you all since Trayvon, it takes nothing to have probable cause. And what is all this grand jury? We gotta go to the grand jury. No, you don't. It's not the, you can cuff them, charge them, lock them up, let them post bail, and then go to the grand jury. You ever been arrested anybody in here? You ain't gotta raise your hand, because probably is nine out of 10. When you got arrested, or when they charge you, did they write you a little card and say the grand jury is, is meeting? Or did they come and say, turn around? Oh, yes, they did. They said, turn around, put your hands behind your back. And there wasn't no judge there. There was no jury there. The Chicago cops, right? And if you acted anywhere near crazy, you got thrown down on the ground, slapped around, beat up, right? Well, Marilyn Mosby cut through the myth that we have to go to the grand jury. Because what she did, no matter what they tell you, was right and exact. I'm telling you, as a prosecutor, she did this textbook. And when that sister said, after she read all of the stops, and we all saw on the cell phone video, that that young brother was already facing death when they dragged him on that van. His body was broken then. We don't need to investigate to bring charges. But all the while, from the moment he went in the hospital, her office was investigating. So she blindsided the police because they actually thought she was waiting on them and what they would say about themselves for her to decide whether she would bring charges. All she was waiting on was the coroner, the medical examiner. She wanted to see one word, homicide. And she saw that word and when she stepped up, I had to pull my car over. It's a lovely spring day. I was a block away from the National House 
And I had my windows down. I had, I had the radio real loud because I had called my husband. I said, have you heard? Have you heard? Have you heard? So I put the phone by the radio and I, it was loud. It was truly loud. And this is a very quiet, upscale community. So this white couple with their dog were walking by. <laughs> And you know, I'm dressed class A because I'm going to meet with the minister, okay? So you know who you're looking at, right? So they walked by with their dog and he had the nerve to turn around and look back at me with a scowl on his face. I said, turn around and keep walking. This is not your business. I was like, go, Marilyn, go. And she just put that, that fight spirit in me. <laughs> and I don't have time to go through the charges. You need to read them. And uh, our general counsel, uh, Brother Abdul Arif Muhammad, sent me the motion that the police filed to have Marilyn, uh, Attorney Marilyn Mosby recuse herself because she has so-called conflict of interest and also a motion to dismiss. But my favorite part of her press conference was when she said, I have issued arrest warrants. So you know how Michael Corleone, while he was christening Connie's baby, Tessio and Clemens and Al Neri were out taking care of business. While she was at that mic, the detectives from her office, state's attorney, you under arrest. Welcome to our world. And you know what, them little three black police officers, sorry about that. You want to ride on the Titanic? Go on down with the Titanic. It's called complicity. You know, how long are you going to stand by and say nothing? You're going to let him break a, a sever his spine and a brother driving the van. They charge him with second degree murder. Darn skip it. Depraved heart murder. We called it depraved indifference in New York. When you are depraved, it means you have zero value for human life. And when she said to the people, the youth, I hear your cry. That is what turned them against her in rage. But you got a black woman, state's attorney, a black woman mayor who was a little weak but got strengthened by her sister. Because she was a little, you know, flimsy. And when Marilyn stepped up there and said, yeah, <laughs> and assault one and assault second degree and false imprisonment, because you never should have arrested him. Oh, yes. So when the mayor comes back out, well, I want, you know what I want up in here? I want a federal pro. That's what I want. I'm like, okay, now, now it's on. And then Loretta Lynch, interesting name, but Attorney General Loretta Lynch is leading the federal investigation. But I'll just say this and close on that point. Yes. Sister, sister. Go, girl. <laughs> and Marilyn had her pearls on and her suit, feminine, silky hair. You under arrest. Married to a strong black man who has no problem with his woman being the state's attorney. Go ahead, black man. 
That's what I'm talking about. The minister walked in a room recently. He's, he's just so incredible. The minister walked in a room filled with, with us, uh, the laborers in the nation. And he said how wonderful it was to be in the assembly of God. And he said, because we are, you're God's children of the most high God, force and power. This is your planet. And he said, I didn't say goddesses. Didn't he say, can I get a witness? Yes, he did. He said, I said gods, male and female gods. He said, because she was with him the self-created one. She is his second self. You know how the Quran said no associates has he? He said the woman is not his associate. He said you don't associate with yourself. And she is, brother, yourself. This man is bringing us an advanced knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that can only come from Allah and His Christ. Only. In conclusion, Brother Jabril Muhammad, who writes the series, Farrakhan the Traveler, and I pray for our your sake you reading it, Articles of Mother Tynetta Muhammad continue to appear in the final call, and most of us haven't taken advantage. And when someone is no longer with us and there's a period on their physical life, it arouses in us a desire to know more. It's just something in, in human nature. But Brother Jabril wrote this article called the progression in value of a servant and helper. And in this article, and you can pull it up um, on finalcall.com, it was reprinted August 28th of 2014. Progression in value of a servant and helper. But if, if I may read to you quickly, brothers and sisters, and I thank you for your patience. These are the words of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad right here in Moscow, July 30th, 1972, to nearly 3,000 people. Quote, I want you to remember today, I have one of my greatest teachers here. And he pointed toward Minister Farrakhan, who was in the last row where the ministers were seated, to his right. What are you hiding behind the sycamore tree for, brother? Come on out here so they can hear you. We have with us today our great national preacher, the preacher who don't mind going into Harlem, New York, one of the most worst towns in our nation or cities. It is our brother in Detroit or Chicago or New York. But I want you to remember every week he is on the air helping me to reach my people that I can't get out of my house to reach like he. I want you to pay good attention to his preaching. His preaching is a bearing of witness to me. I'll say that again. His, this is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. His preaching is a bearing of witness to me and what God has revealed to me. This is one of the strongest national preachers I have in the bounds of North America. Now hear this. Everywhere you hear him. Listen to him. Everywhere you see him, look at him. 
Everywhere he advises you to go, go. Everywhere he advises you to stay from, stay from. So we are thankful to Allah for this great helper of mine, Minister Farrakhan. Now listen what Brother Jabril writes. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad often said and did certain things with the future in his mind. As a result, Careless lifestyles are killing us in droves across all ages. The merchants of death dump filth daily into our communities and we put it into our bodies. It is best to make the most of this life and empower ourselves through helpful living. Let me share my thoughts with you on this special video, Call Now to Order. Get Farrakhan's program for better health and the story behind his bout with cancer. To order, call now. 312-602-1230. That's what I'm talking about! deeper reason than we understand why we were taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad not to carry or possess weapons of any kind. It was not to punctify us, but to strengthen us. See, when you are a God, meaning force and power, you rely on your will and your ability to make your thought a reality. Do you know you can perceive people coming up on you from blocks away if your brain is not soaked with chemical marijuana? To our people that whenever they walk and they operate, see, it's hard to sell dope to another guy. Yeah. It's hard to gun down another guy. Yeah. Like 
it used to be. That's right. All praise to Jesus. That's right. After 10,000 fearless, the minister gave us an instruction. He said we have to go back and take over the educational systems in the ghettos of America. Come on now. Didn't he say that? Yes, sir. Why shouldn't we take it over? At the end of the day, our property tax is what pays for gas, lights, water, repairs, and salaries in that school. Is that the truth? Yes, sir. So if my money takes care of everything in that school, I am the owner and the boss. Right. So a teacher works for me. The principal works for me. That is my school. Did you know that black and white children start school the same way? Right. Y'all didn't hear me. Come on now. The sisters know it's the truth. If you've ever dropped off your babies for the first day of school, especially when they were, they were real young. Sisters, when you drop your son or daughter off, did not they hold on to your leg? Cry? Mommy, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. They cry. But if you look over, you see the white child doing their mother the same way. Huh, some brothers? Is it the truth? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so when you seen the black and the white child, they both started school the same way. Whenever your baby walked away from you, just like the little white boy or girl, they both walked away with their head down, didn't they? Real timid. Didn't they? But if you notice, as, as the two black and white began to matriculate through 12 years of the Georgia public food system, I mean school system, Notice you start seeing, you, you see that, that as the two are going through school, they're both running about George Washington, a white man. Thomas Jefferson, Plato, Aristotle, Socrates, all these hypothagoras. All they learned about is white people that did great things. So you see the little white child come up out of school, no longer head timid but with their back straight chest out walking out of school ready to be a conqueror of the known world but the little black child learned about white people he left the school his head was still down and not only was his head down now but his pants was down so you believe you can be like the first thing you have to have is something in common with it come on now come on so if white people are not us and we are not them learning about white people doesn't have the same effect as it does for white children that's right even betty crocker got enough sense to know that did you know if betty crocker wants to develop a recipe for a red velvet cake she makes it different for new orleans than she does for denver colorado why? Because Denver, Colorado is the Mile High City. It's the highest point in the land. And New Orleans is the lowest point. Come on. You have the same goal, but you have to have a different recipe. So it is with the black and the white child. Come on, man. There has to be a different recipe. And the real reason why we hurt one another is because we don't have a knowledge of ourselves. That's right. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, if you want to stop black on black rape, black on black murder, black on Your other self. Oh. And if I know me love.
me show you something. Come on, come on, come on, man. Do you know that they did something in Harlem, New York, that has been labeled the Obama effect? Mm. A group of high school students, black children, were, took a test before they became, before he became president. 80% of them flunked. Gave the same students the test after he won. 80% of them passed with flying colors. about y'all, Mike will I have a confession to make. When Obama was running for office, I was excited. Right. I'm not talking about the first term now. Right, 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 right. Second term, I was like, Negro, please. Right, right, right. Just personally now, that's what I was doing. But yeah, when he was running for what was the black people excited? Right. I mean, I, I, I was excited because we are used to seeing black men out jump white men. Black men outrun white men. Black men outdance white men. Black men out outplay out white men. But I was looking at a black man out victim crowds. And I, I like that. So I was I was getting text messages. It was almost like the Underground Railroad via text message. I had one message that said. They said it'd be a cold day in hell before a black man become president in America. It was 28 degrees during the inauguration. <laughs> y'all, y'all get it in here? I had another one that said, they say that, that before a black man become president, pigs will fly. Here come the swine flu. <laughs> into an acronym. Obama, obviously blacks are moving America. McCain, maybe crackers can't accept it now. <laughs> Text message. And, 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 then my, I, and then my last text message that I got, my cousin, he sent me, said, they say that over to the fat lady singing Aretha Franklin did the national anthem. <laughs>
and we adopted this seventh principle that he said the Jews have adopted and has made them successful. Come on now. He said that's a specific verse of the Bible that the Jews have taken personal and it has made them successful. Come on now. He said we must do the same thing. He said it's in the book of Proverbs chapter 6 verse 6. In the book of Proverbs written by Solomon chapter 6 verse 6 it says study the end thou Negro. Right. Learn what? Now this is not the King James version this is the LeBron James translation. <laughs> But it stands true. No, it, it says, stay the damn now, slug Right, right. <laughs> Learn her ways and be with what Negroes are slug We slow now. Come on, act like we are. <laughs> stay the damn now, slug Learn her ways and become wise. Wow. That's right. So, so the minister is telling us that we can achieve everything we are fighting for if we operate as a people with the mindset of an ant. Do you know that ants, no ant knows the job of another ant? Right, right. You didn't hear me. Come on now. In fact, ants don't even know what the big picture that they're working for even looks like. yourself it's like if you spread yourself out like uh that's how um i think it's a thing with uh prophet muhammad was uh, having uh, it was a battle and the sister had to come and help him because they he had taken over uh a city and then everybody was going and getting the spoils of war and everything they like started diluting themselves out and then uh the enemy came up and flanked from behind yeah i think i think we i think we understand i'm gonna let uh, my brother antonio Raphael and also uh, my brother Vezo deal with those as far as you saying, like, um, spreading ourselves out, that's the whole point. If it's two wars, then we spread ourselves out. We don't have to fight one at a time. No one said that. We fight two at a time. It's enough of us to fight both wars. Because at, at the end of the day, the dudes that's doing the killing, they not fighting no war. So who gonna focus on them? We, we get everybody to fight one war, and there's still another war going, war going on, and then we got have the other people that can be fighting the other wars sitting at home, we make use of everybody. 
And as far as them coming to, coming to have the city, that's why I said we have a plan. We play them mentally. If we think about it, all it takes is a thought. We make we make sense of our decisions, and it's going to happen regardless. I own two businesses in Detroit, and I'm not giving them up no time soon. So if they come to the city now, they support two of my businesses. It's up to us to buy things. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to us, that everything that exists in the universe comes from a thought. He said thought travels on the average of 24 billion miles per second. Some faster and some thoughts are slower. What determines the speed of a man's thought? It is the sincerity of that thought and the amount of bridges inside of the brain that transmit the said thought. So the more bridges we have from cell to cell and the more sincere our thoughts are, the faster they are able to move and accomplish that which we think. So in the white man's study, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he said, okay, let's destroy the black man's mind. So I will design drugs that are built to break bridges between each brain cell. And since that thought, 24 billion miles per second, needs the 14 billion brain cells. In order to land and to transmit its energy, I will work to destroy the bridges between each cell and ultimately get rid of the cells altogether. That way, no matter how fast the thought is traveling, no matter how sincere the original man's thought might be, if they have no, they have no bridges, then they will not be able to bring in existence what they think in a satisfactory time period. And they will develop frustration, disappointment, disbelief in themselves, and turn on one another. So the white man made crack cocaine. I said the white man made crack cocaine. Shaolin shadow boxing. And the Wu Tang saw style. If what you say is true, the Shaolin and the Wu Tang could be dangerous. Do you think your Wu Tang saw can defeat me? On guard. I'll let you try my Wu Tang style. I thought about how I arranged all of this. I was here, a lieutenant here in Chicago. And I love Chicago. I was out of Elijah Muhammad's security man. I went everywhere he went. California, my first jet flight was with him going to Los Angeles, 1960. And one day he came out to the Mars one night and spoke. He said, I got good labels here. He said, but I need your help. I want y'all to get go out and help me. At that moment, boom, you got to leave Chicago. So I had never had no intentions of leaving Chicago. But the brothers from LA, when I was, got registered that, they came through here, saved me in 61. Promise me this and promise me that. Come on out. Blah, blah, blah. So, I believe now I'm going back out there. But when I got to Miami, I saw the, uh, little, why am I just saying like the little, little raggedy place we were living in? And it had a hole over the back of the glove when we were speaking. And he didn't have enough knowledge at that time to put the face over the wall. So I sat there, and I said, if I left this hall, I was going to kill me. Then the underlying one was found out I was down there, and he told the minister, make him your captain. So that's how I became a captain to his orders. So, so now, now one day, day and I have a few brothers, brothers so I'm in the captain, but I ain't got no army. So, so now I got to make my own army. 
so I hit the street. street. And, and some, some selling, selling papers. papers. Um, and so, so I was on the street, street to Miami, 6th Street, 2nd Avenue. Avenue. By the middle of the hotel, the black, black hotel. hotel. And he, and he saw, saw me. me. Hey, hey brother. brother! Wow, wow we, we call, call me Negroes. Negroes. Wow, wow, we blind and dumb. Wow, wow, wow everybody, everybody making progress. progress. And we, we lagging, lagging so far behind. behind. This, this was a song. song. That, that the the honorable honorable Minister Lewis, Lewis Fire, Fire and put, and put out. out. So, so white, white man, man heaven, black, black man, man heaven. Five, 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 you want to check, check, check my back book out? out? Come down my room, 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 room. Show me a little bit clippy. Where he had, had shipped ship up Ingemar uh, uh, Johansson. Johansson. He was, he the, was the heavyweight champion, champion, champion at that time. time. He was in, he was in Miami, Miami for a rematch, rematch with Floyd Patterson, Patterson who, who he had, he had taken a title from. But Ali beat him up in a spine session. So they say, he's a brass kid. From Louisville, about, about to mess up mess a four, four million, million dollar cake. And when I, and when I read, read that, that, I looked, I looked up, up at him, seen him, seen him doing, doing his thing. thing. I, was, I, was, I, I said, if I, said, I, look, if I look, look out for this boy, boy he, will he, will he will be a champ. champ. So, so, <laughs> and, and then, then they, they show show from that day on, on I, I was teaching the Islam. Teaching the teaching Islam. Islam. Teaching the Islam. Islam. And, and he was living, he was living in a rooming room house. house. A room, a room I, should I should say. Uh, they, uh, had, they had him there. And he was and making, he was making money. money for white, for folks. white folks. I said, man, I said, man, they got you right here like this. I said, man, they got you a hotel room in the car of a hotel. So they got him in the room in the car of a hotel. You know where he could eat, the dining room, the room. Which was a leading, was a leading black, black hotel, hotel in, Miami. in Miami. And then after that, after that went on, went on he, he went out, he went out to the, the West, West Coast, Coast beat out your mode. And when he got back to beat out your mode, I said, make him get you a house. These are big white men that owned him at that time. I said, make him get you a house. And when they got him, he got him every time he asked for something. They gave it to him. But see, he didn't know how to live. So I'm, so I'm telling him, teaching him teaching the ropes, ropes, the ropes and telling him how to go. So they, so they got, got in the house. In the house. I, put, I put two Muslim, two Muslim sisters, sisters in there, in there and, to make that bean soup, soup every day. Every day. <laughs> I put another, I put another one, in one in there to keep the, to house, keep the clean. house clean. So now I got, so now three, I got three Muslims, Muslims on, payroll. on payroll. Now I ain't, now I ain't talking about donations. 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 Payroll. Payroll. The white the folks white was paying, paying, paying for us. Okay, so okay. That went on. That went on. Now, now. Leading right, Lead up, right up to the time, time, time he's getting ready to fight this under this thing. Malcolm, Malcolm had made a statement in New York. In New York. About the chickens, about the chickens coming, coming home, home to roost. For the honor of the honor of the took him out of, him out of speaking, speaking engagement, engagement for, 90 for 90 days. Didn't take his didn't minister, take his minister, minister from, him. from him. Just took him just out of the scene for 90 days. So at that, so time, at that time, me, me, and Ali, and Ali, and born and born and born and born and born so Malcolm, so Malcolm come down to him, down to him, and cool out, and cool out, like a little vacation. Like a little vacation. So Malcolm, so came, Malcolm down. came down, and after he got after down, he, got he down, asked me, he asked me, you know, you know, his sister, his sister was cooking, cooking for me, right here, right here, right here, everything. So, so he asked me, he asked me, he said, if I go over, if to, I the go gym, over to the gym, would I hurt, would I hurt Brother Cassius? I said, heck yeah, yeah man, yeah, man, everybody, everybody know, you. know you, because, because in those days. If we had to, we had to, we, we didn't expose Ali, 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 Ali to the public that he was that he was practicing Islam, because he didn't want to know it either. So, 
So when Malcolm, when Malcolm, when I told him, that, I told him that he didn't listen. He to didn't me. listen to me. He went in, he a, went way. in a way. When I got, when I got with Ali, and with Ali, they're taking, they're taking pictures. So the, so the news come the out. News boom. come out. Boom. Malcolm X, Malcolm X is in Miami. Is in Miami. The crew, the crew, cash is clay. Cash is clay to Islam. And I had, and I had this man in Islam over two or three, over years. Two or three years uh, before, uh, before Malcolm ever, Malcolm met, the ever met the man. Assalamu alaikum. In the most holy name of Allah, the all wise, true, and living God, to whom all praise is due forever for his coming and finding of the lost and found people of his father's house, the nation of Islam and tribe of Shabazz, Master Farad Muhammad, the great Mahdi. We forever thank him for searching among us and finding one in whom he could put his spirit, his guidance, and leave us with a leader and a teacher and now exalted Christ, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And we forever thank the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for praying that one would be in the classroom of God that he could choose to put over the nation in his absence, the most honorable minister, Louis Farrakhan. I greet you who are listening to this uh, presentation this afternoon with the greetings of peace and paradise. Assalamu alaikum. Briefly, brothers and sisters, I want you to know that I am truly honored and thankful to Almighty God Allah to be able to make this special presentation at Mosque Maryam. The body of knowledge contained in the Supreme Wisdom lessons given to us to study by Master Farad Muhammad through his chosen servant, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, introduces us to an entire new school of thought, which is the foundation of a whole new world. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan called for the Atonement Commission to be comprised of nine commissions in the late fall of the year 2000. To begin the process, of the restructuring and reorganizing of the nation of Islam. This assignment cannot be fully accomplished until we examine ourselves in the process by restructuring and reorganizing our thinking and our mind to be in accord with the thinking and the mind of God who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad and his Christ, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. When the Honorable Minister Farrakhan stated that the 10th system to the commission represents the brain, I began to process this information by putting it into writing the following documents prepared as a student of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad to be considered as a contribution to this commission. My approach to this subject is directly linked to our lesson assignment and is based upon the mathematical definition of what Islam is. Following Minister Farrakhan's review of my materials submitted, he felt that I should come before the body and make a presentation to the Commission and to the Nation of Islam based on my research and findings. I wish to thank the Honorable Minister for this opportunity and I truly wish to acknowledge the help of those persons in the seventh region who assisted me in the preparation of my materials, which includes Sister Rosalind uh, Mohammed for her computer and typing skills, to Sister Shernet Mohammed for her artistic skills in rendering illustrations and diagrams, and to my son Rasul Mohammed who facilitated their participation 
as the helper of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in the 7th region. Because it is very important, my dear beloved brothers and sisters, to give you the context out of which my inspiration came to present to the minister uh, my paper. I want to share with you a letter and a six-page dissertation that I was inspired to bring to him here in Chicago. On August 21 of this year, I wrote the following letter to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, to the members of the nine commissions, and the general body of students of the Nation of Islam. Assalamu alaikum. As a student and follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I submit the following material to be studied as an introduction to what I have discovered concerning the supreme wisdom lessons during the last 28 years since the departure of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. The fullness of what I have to report will be presented, be it the will of Allah, as my thesis on the mathematical theology of Islam to the University of Islam as both an oral and written dissertation based on the lessons and the supreme wisdom teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Prior to the departure of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in 1975, he sat with some of his laborers, officials, and family members and set the standard of our lessons as the basis of our work today. He requested of us to only ask questions pertaining to our lessons. He further stated that we would be examined before our Savior Allah on this assignment. In retrospect, tracing back to our early beginnings in the 1930s, his words came to us as the second reminder of the importance of studying this body of knowledge coming directly from Master W. Farrard Muhammad upon his departure in 1934. In May of this year, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan addressed our nation in a three-day webcast from Mosque Maryam, directing us to the same instructions given by his teacher, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, prior to his departure. He gently warned us to return back to our study of our original assignment, focusing on those early instructions to the laborers, which includes the lessons, the Holy Quran, and the Bible. As you may know, I have devoted a great deal of my studies to this assignment over the years and have made many interesting discoveries that link us to a more comprehensive understanding of both the Holy Quran and Bible from a more scientific and historical perspective. It has opened big fields of knowledge that engage truth on every new frontier of investigation and research. The great body of knowledge of the supreme wisdom is exactly that and can be proven in no limit of time, which takes us into infinity. This is why we say mathematics is Islam and Islam is mathematics. While in Mexico, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in 1974 instructed me further concerning the study of our lessons when he stated that the lessons would be the foundation of the teaching to the people of Mexico. This indicated to me that our lessons are indeed universal in nature and we must study how to apply them at all times as the basis of our work today. He also asked me to inquire into the government's qualifications for setting up a school in that country. Within a year, he was no longer among us. And ever since that time, I have been searching for a way to implement this assignment. I returned to the United States and formulated the Honorable Elijah Muhammad Educational Foundation in the late 1970s to continue in the study and research of his divine teachings and program and its application to a modern and scientific age. I am most thankful to Almighty God Allah for this opportunity to share with you some of my findings as we seek to improve the quality of our lives 
in the pursuit of happiness. Assalamu alaikum, most humbly submitted Mother Taneta Muhammad. Now, brothers and sisters, I wanted to give to you the details and exactitude of the words as I presented them to the Honorable Minister Farrakhan on the very day that the Commission met on August the 23rd here in Bas Maryam. And I entitled my paper as only an introduction, how the 10th system, the brain, is applied to the nine commissions in the restructuring and reorganization of the nation of Islam. This paper will be read to you at this time because I do not want to miss one connecting line or one connecting link which may, um, which may not be received in the fullness of the meaning. I will attempt to equate the tenth system, the brain, to the reorganization and restructuring of the nation of Islam precisely to the lessons of the supreme wisdom. This body of knowledge called the supreme wisdom comes directly from God himself in person. Each new convert that enters the nation of Islam as a student must recite the ten questions and answers of student enrollment before he or she is admitted into the classroom of God. And that is to be qualified for future positions awaiting them upon examination of their courses of study based on the lessons. It is this standard that is used to evaluate each student's progress to see if they are qualified to be fit for future placement by Almighty God Allah. You will find corresponding instructions in the 13 paragraphs to the laborers. Paragraph 1 explains that through Allah's prophets and apostles as the people's guide and example that his mystery is revealed. And those who follow the apostle would see the light. In a dream I had many years ago, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was leading me through a tunnel or passage that led to a door which was standing open. Inside there was a large gathering of people. He beckoned me to enter and I simultaneously beckoned to him to enter. Once inside the room, I saw a large body of people seated like students in a classroom or a lecture hall. I looked for a chair which was pointed out to me. Once seated, I looked up and to my surprise, I saw Master Farrard Muhammad standing in the center of the room at a blackboard. He was writing the number 144,000. At the top of the circular shaped room, there appeared as if suspended from the ceiling a giant crystal chandelier. The complete number of questions and answers and actual facts in our lessons comes to 154. When the 10 questions and answers of student enrollment are subtracted from the 154, we have 144 remaining questions and answers. The number 144,000 appears in the Bible as the first fruit convert to God and his Christ. This is a figure representing God's elect that will be taken out of the whole body of new converts that God would work with to first square and then cube the nations of the world into a standard of righteousness. 144 cubed equals 1,728 cubic inches, which is equal to one cubic foot. In time measurement, that is by days, 24 hours in a day multiplied by six days equals 144. The seventh day in creation is called the day of rest and is sanctified as the Lord's day. The seventh day is equal to the early morning of the seventh thousandth millennium in which Christ will establish his kingdom on earth. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad stated that the whole scope of Master Farrar Muhammad's teachings is astronomy. The inner meaning of the first 10 questions and answers of student enrollment is designated as the Big Ten, 
representing the family of the sun and her nine planets. In its deeper meaning, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad compared the family of the Big Ten to the role of the woman who carries the light germ in her womb for nine months to completion and birth. To study astronomy, we must have a knowledge of mathematics, the universal language to acquire universal knowledge. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad has stated that a people who do not have a knowledge of mathematics cannot build and will always be subject to a people who know mathematics. I once asked the Honorable Elijah Muhammad if Master W. Farrard Muhammad continues to study, and he answered me in the affirmative. So what excuse do we have not to study? According to the history of Jesus and his mother, also given to us to study by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad as a sign of our evolving and developing community, we read that mathematics was the number one subject that the prophet or the wise man required of Jesus to begin teaching him how to tune in. This knowledge was given to him to protect him in his mission against the plot of the enemies who sought to take his life. Mary and Joseph also had the ability to tune in. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad told us that one in every 100 of our people in the East also have this ability. The prophet began teaching Jesus, and because he was quick in learning, he mastered this teaching in three lessons. Then he tested Jesus' ability to tune in by giving him the greeting, Assalamu Alaikum, to which Jesus responded, Wa Alaikum Salam. When the angel Jibril revealed the first revelation of the Holy Quran to Prophet Muhammad, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, he revealed it within a mathematical context in which letters, words, verses, and chapters are all mathematically coded. The Holy Quran was later arranged also by revelation in the chapter sequence that we read today. We will note that the angel Jibril also appeared to Mary in the 19th surah which carries her name. In exactly 19 verses, 16 through 24, announcing the birth of Jesus and some words about his future work and mission, which comes all the way down to us today. Happiness, brothers and sisters, is the removal of stress. When we have the right understanding about ourselves and others and the world in which we live, if we look at paragraph one where the word stress is applied to our assignment. It may be neglect of duty or default in duty, which produces the stress-related ailments that we're suffering today because we do not have the right understanding of ourselves, nor our relationship to God, nor our relationship to others, <laughs> and to our relationship to the rest of the world. As we stay fully committed and focused on our assignment and mission, given in the details of the 13 paragraphs, and in the body of our lessons, we will learn how to live happy and productive lives. And everything we touch will literally turn into gold. We are guaranteed that the restrictive law, when enforced, is our success. I have correlated the 10th system, the brain, to the supreme wisdom lessons, beginning with 10 questions and answers of student enrollment, which interest, introduces us to the knowledge of God and the knowledge of self from the very first question and answer, who is the original man? This means that God himself is the brain of all operations that make all the other nine systems of the body work effectively. The first mention of the word brain appears in lesson number two, question and answer 28, with a reference to Yaqub's grafting of the white race. The nurse stuck a needle in the brain of the black baby at birth, putting him to sleep, which is the condition of the black man and people today and all over the planet Earth. There is a parable in the Bible given in John chapter 21 verses 1 through 14 concerning Jesus' disciple or disciples who are being taught a lesson by Jesus 
on how to be fishers of men. They were throwing their nets rather haphazardly into the water from the boat, trying to catch fish. Jesus instructed them from the seashore to cast their nets on the right side of the boat. When following these instructions, they caught 153 fish and brought them to shore. It is interesting to note that if we take the 153 fish and add Jesus himself, the sum is 154, which is exactly equal to the number of questions and answers in our lessons. And I'm footnoting here for us to look at paragraph 3 of instructions for further details from our Savior Allah. But just in general, it states that the use of these lessons given to us to study by Master Farad Muhammad must be used at all time with the new converts. It is the bait by which we will catch the fish. And we must prove at all times that our Savior Allah has come to deliver us the end of this present civilization and the beginning of a new civilization which will be ruled by people who will uphold justice, freedom, and equality and will be made the new rulers of an entire new world civilization. This parable may be compared to the catching and processing of the new converts to Islam who are being raised from the dead. The means and methods in raising the dead have varied throughout the years, but the foundation of our recruiting effort is found in the use, practice, and application of the language in the proper terms with the use of the lessons of the supreme wisdom which must be used in the resurrection of the mentally dead. These lessons are designed and patterned from the mind and thinking of God transmitted to his chosen servants, the prophets, as a guide for others. In the ancient land of our fathers, in Egypt, there stands in the middle and on the border thereof the great pyramid of Giza that remains to this day as the only remaining seventh wonder of the world. It was constructed on 13 acres of land a few miles outside of Cairo. Its original casing stones, which was made out of pure white limestone, are equal to 22 acres. Every measurement was built and designed by the architect to measure in stone a history of the world of the last 6,000 years and beyond into the seventh millennium. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad first drew my attention to the study of the Great Pyramid and its mathematical measurements when he stated to some of his followers and family members at the dinner table that if we wanted to get a picture of how our ancient civilizations were built, that we should study the monuments in Egypt. The number of fish, 153, mentioned in John chapter 21, is also contained within the measurements of the Great Pyramid. As one enters on the north side of the Great Pyramid on the 19th core stone, you have to move left 286.1 pyramid inches. This number of pyramid inches appears in many places in the measurements of the stones and the inner passages that leads upwards to the truncated platform where there is a missing capstone. This number of pyramid inches, 286.1, is called the displacement factor. In order to correct this movement to the left, which implies deviation or sinister in Latin, one must turn to the right, counting that same measurement of pyramid inches to get back on track. This leads the initiate or student to higher wisdom on the path to becoming a master. It is interesting to note that the second chapter of the Holy Quran entitled Al-Baqarah, the cow, contains exactly 286 verses and speaks of the deviation of the followers of Moses. Inside the Great Pyramid, there are ascending and descending passageways 
which are measured according to the alignment of specific stars. This knowledge was given to us also from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He stated that the pyramid was built in alignment to the stars and that in order to destroy uh, the pyramid and its meaning and its sign, you would have to destroy the stars to which they are aligned. He also taught us that the building of the pyramid was done by a mechanical mean of a hydraulic water to push the stones into place and that at this particular time that instrument has been hidden lest our open enemies discover its use and be able to prolong and extend their civilization. When we pass through the grand gallery that is constructed with seven tiers inside of the pyramid, we have an uplift that raises up beyond the stooped position that we're in when we reach those ascending or descending passageways. We come exactly 286.1 pyramid inches up so that we can really start taking a breath and keep moving in the direction of the truncated pyramid. We come then to a horizontal passage that leads to the king's chamber located on the 50th, counting from the foundation up, to the 50th core stone. From the 50th core stone to the pyramid's platform, we measure another 153 core stones. Pay attention to the word course because this is going to come up later as we move into the second part of my presentation, the word course and courses. We will note the recurrence of this number 153, which referred to the number of fish that were caught by seven disciples in the parable of Jesus and the fishermen. Now let us suppose that the missing capstone represents Christ himself. It is believed that the construction of the uh, capstone was never done, though there are some who believe that it was originally made out of gold and some believe that it was originally made out of um, crystal, that it was never really made at all. It was left there and designed by the architect to represent the Christ in the millennial age. And it was also there to represent a people who had been rejected, like the rejected stone that we read of in scriptures. So if then we say that this capstone represents Christ in his glory, and we add together the 153 core stones that led from the king's chamber to that truncated uh, pyramid, we come exactly to the lesson code again, 154. When 154 is divided by 7, we get 22 7, which represents the fraction of pi. And among the, our ancient people of Egypt, they use fractions and not decimals. So you can read it as a decimal, 3.14 they generally give, or 3.1459. And we know it goes on into affinity and they can't find the end of it. They cannot round that off. But let us see later what we can do with a fraction. As we review our entrance into the pyramid, we will recall that it was on the 19th core stone, which answers to the mathematical code of the Holy Quran. And we also found that the second chapter, the very second chapter, Baqarah, the longest chapter in the Holy Quran, contains exactly 286 verses, which represents the deviation and also the correction to get back on track. The Bible, too, in this specific instance, also answers to the mathematical code of 19. We read exactly in Isaiah 19, verses 19 and 20, a reference to the building of this monument, the Great Pyramid, standing in the middle of Egypt and on the border thereof. This hidden wisdom is contained in the use of letters, and numbers and words that is a part of the Jewish numerical system called gematria or gematria I think it is gematria where letters the Hebrew letters were identified and used as numbers which as a point of reference the rabbis concealed which is called the Kabbalah and uh, other Talmudic writings 
But they knew the deeper secret meaning of these scriptural passages. And ultimately what happens is that as they added up the letters and the words that comprise the 19th uh, verse of chapter 19 of Isaiah, it comes to 5,449. Now what is interesting is that is the exact height of the great pyramid that takes you to the truncated part, which means that there's something missing. Interesting in the study of our lessons, in the student enrollment, we are given the birth or the birth date of uh, Christianity, Buddhism, uh, and Islam. Christianity is given as 551 years. So if you add that 551 years to the 5,449 figure, we get 6,000, which then lets us know that at the end of the 6,000 years that Christ will come and he himself may represent then in this analogy the missing capstone and also the rejected stone that the builders disallowed hmm, until restored in the messianic age with the coming of the Messiah of Christ who will establish the kingdom or his kingdom on earth with a people that is considered to be no people at all. This rejected stone becomes the chief cornerstone of the building and the foundation of God's new kingdom, referred to in the scriptures as the 7,000th millennium reign of Christ on earth. Could anything fit so perfectly? If we add together all those series of numbers that I identified as the displacement factor, that is 286.1 pyramid inches, that is counting one plus two plus three plus four, all the way up to 17, the result uh, of those digits comes again, astoundingly, uh, 153. Again, representing the number of fish caught by Jesus in the parable, revealing the number code of our lessons. The number 17 here, with six zeros added to it, comes to the figure 17 million, which represents the lost found members of the nation of Islam in America when we were found by Master W. Farrard Muhammad. Every number, every letter, every word, every syllable has a profound connection to the mathematical theology of Islam as we are taught in problem number 13. The Holy Quran reveals, and certainly we have made the word to have many connections for their sake so that they may be mindful. Master Farrard Muhammad, God in person, laid the foundation of his new world order on a square number in mathematics, which is 12. When this number is squared, it gives us 144, which refers to the 144,000 elect. We will also see its reference to point number 12 in the Muslim program of wants and beliefs. Our lessons are mathematically coded for each student to enter the mathematical matrix of the supreme wisdom. The keys to the methodology and approach to our study is given by the master himself in letters, numbers, words, and syllables along with their pronunciation. So when you use this system, what happens is that you're able to look into everything around you, the atom itself, the physical world, the spiritual world, mental planes of consciousness, and you will begin to see that which others do not see. You will hear that which others do not hear, and you will perceive and see that which others are not perceiving and cannot see because they were not given this methodology, which was learned by the Jews and also has determined why they are the rulers of the present world order, how they happen to rule over their brothers the, of the Caucasian race. In the Supreme Wisdom Lessons, published recently in book form, we are given 13 paragraphs of instruction to study, followed by problem number 13. When these numbers are added together, the result is 26 which is equal to the 26 letters of the English alphabet, which is coded in the methodology of the 13th problem. And we have the 10 numbers 
That is, when we recite 10 questions and answers of student enrollment, we have the 10 numbers of the mathematical language which defines the deepest meaning of Islam. The basis of our work today, brothers and sisters, is to make our brains and our minds work in perfect alignment with the mind and thinking of God. The scientists come among us asking questions, helping us to tune into a higher frequency of thought and state of mental consciousness. As the Honorable Minister Farrakhan has entitled his 18th study guide, Rising Above Emotion into the Thinking of God. We, the Nation of Islam, lose no time. Ask questions and learn all about yourself. What are you doing today for yourself? Your brother from the East wants to know and hear from you at once. We find that written in one of our problems, problem number 31. Okay. I have attempted to demonstrate that the tenth system, the brain, represents the working of the mind of God through the example of the body of wisdom that he brought to us called the supreme wisdom teachings now of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. The supreme wisdom lessons is like the illuminating book of the divine scriptures of both Holy Quran and Bible. The great pyramid of Egypt serves as a testimony in stone of this great truth. As we begin our courses of study in developing a national curriculum for all members of the Nation of Islam, we are all working from the same foundation of truth, hopefully to be approved by God. Now, brothers and sisters, I read to you exactly what I presented to the Honorable Minister Farrakhan. In the second part of my presentation, I am going to go further into the formula of pi and how it applies to the dynamics of our lessons and how it applies to the practical everyday life. And as I enter into this study, I want to utilize the vision uh, of Ezekiel. And I will explain that when we get to the diagram. The discovery of pi in our lessons leads us to the entrance of the mathematical matrix of the supreme wisdom lessons and the theology of time computer game. The Honorable Minister Farrakhan has stated that whoever draws the diameter of your knowledge prescribes the circumference of your activity. Over the last several decades, I have attempted to apply the lessons mathematical code to my everyday life's experiences. I was inspired to look more diligently into its application as a result of the words of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad directed to his labors and family members at the dinner table in Chicago just prior to his departure. He also instructed me concerning the importance of the lessons in teaching others in Mexico. During these many years since his departure, I have attempted to find innovative ways to apply this wisdom that he shared with me. My first mathematical breakthrough came in the late 1970s and beginning years of the 1980s. I was introduced to both the mathematical 19-based um, revelation of the Holy Quran and intuitively I came to see its relevance to the mathematical complement of 22.7 pi discovered in our lessons. As I previously stated, and I will repeat this, I divided the number seven into 154, which resulted in 22, which combined together, 22, seven, represents the fraction of pi. I applied the discovery of pi to the whole complex of the Muslim program presented by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, which I have configured in various diagrams which includes reading assignments, books and study guide material, all programs for home study and as a computer game for the entire family. I reviewed the 13 instructions to the laborers concerning the structure, the ideal structure of the ideal mosque, temple, school, educational center, and economic program and discovered a whole system of reorientation linked to re-education and training, 
beginning from the grounds of Mosque Maryam, an educational center, to be disseminated throughout our communities, both at home and abroad. I discovered that in the working of these two main mathematical formulas, pi as a fraction, 22-7, and the 19 mathematical code of the Holy Quran, that I was able to synthesize the body of knowledge contained in the Supreme Wisdom Lessons and the Muslim program in a mathematical way. The sign of Jesus' history and his mother are paramount to this study, especially in the area of Jesus' education and training, which took place in Egypt as a sign. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that Jesus studied at Peach Pyramid, to which he also made a reference in the Theology of Time lecture series in 1972 to Al-Azhar University also as a sign. Many years ago, I had a dream in which I was visiting Cairo, Egypt. I was inside an apothecary and a fragrance shop. My eyes were attracted to a small glass beaker containing a container that held a liquid the color of amber. I asked the shopkeeper the name of the fragrance and she told me that it was peach. When I awakened, I was puzzled over the meaning of that dream. Within several hours time, I mentally turned the letters of the word peach around, scrambled them around, and it spelled Cheops. I then realized that Jesus' study at Peach Pyramid was a code for the master's training at the Great Pyramid of Cheops. The key to the mathematical matrix of the Supreme Wisdom Lessons and the Theology of Time computer game that I am developing is based on the mathematical formula of Pi. Our assignment of the Supreme Wisdom Lessons is designed to teach a student how to tune in to the mind of God through a series of questions and answers, which was the way that the prophet or the wise man taught Jesus how to tune in by asking him a question and he would then give the answers. We, brothers and sisters, are actually enrolled in the divinity school of gods, chosen and elected to be made the future rulers of a new world order born from a new world of thought. As we continue to process this information, we will become a light-bearing sun reflecting Christ consciousness from within. By following this path of enlightenment, with further instructions from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, we too will become a light unto the world. Thank you for your patience, submitted by a fellow student and follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Sister Tanetta Muhammad. Well, that ends, brothers and sisters, exact word per word with a few commentaries that I made uh, presented to the Honorable Minister Farrakhan. And before I go into the second part of my presentation, uh, which will show you one of the diagrams, I have many other diagrams, but since this is just the introduction, I have only one diagram that I am going to explain how the system works in the course of our re-education and training. I'm going to draw an analogy of my diagram presentation to the mechanics, to the mechanics of the great mother wheel or plane as we have been taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad who refers to the mechanics of the wheel to Ezekiel's vision of a wheel in the middle of a wheel. The second reason for making this analogy of our Supreme Wisdom Lessons to the Great Mother's Wheel is to draw our attention to the vision-like experience of the Honorable Minister Farrakhan, who was taken to the wheel to be in direct communication with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, which took place in Mexico in 1985. There are various quotes from the Messenger's writings on the Mother Wheel and Ezekiel that link directly to our studies. First of all, you will note that in our studies, particularly beginning with lesson number two, which the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said symbolizes in those 40 
questions and answers, the making of a man, the making of a very special man who is being prepared, all right, to be changed into a new people and to become the masters of a new world order that is to take the place of Satan's world. So the Savior is pointed out as being the Son of Man. The Son of Man. They looked for that mystery God for trillions and trillions of years. And they came to the conclusion that there is no mystery God. That he is the Son of Man. And we cannot point or to any other object of worship, a statue, fall down and worship, or any other means. Spirit cannot be uh, God. The spirit itself has to be contained within a person, okay, who is highly evolved. So, a quote from Message to the Black Man in America, and you'll note Son of Man is mentioned at least four, five times in lesson number two, and also the Son of Man, and not a spook, who measured all the planets and their distances and the speed of sound and the speed of thought is not done by a spook. They are actual facts done by W.D. Farrard or Master Farrard Muhammad. Now this is what he said on page 14 or page 17. He pointed out a dreadful looking plane that is made like a wheel in the sky today. It is a half mile by a half mile square. It is a humanly built planet. Listen to that. A humanly built planet. It is up there and can be seen twice a week. And he ends it by saying, it is no secret. Ezekiel saw it a long time ago. Then he continues. The sign of the Son of Man would be seen in the heavens. The tribes of the earth would mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. That is from Matthew 24, 30. Now notice Matthew starts with a sound and we're going back and implementing why words and letters, etc., are taken apart and you will begin to see the analogy, how it works. The first sound in Matthew is math. So mathematically and mechanically, we have the structure of the wheel, which is exact dimensions that are fulfilling a specific purpose. He goes on, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, to tell us that the vision of Ezekiel's wheel in a wheel in the sky is true if carefully understood. There is a similar wheel in the sky today, which very well answers the description of Ezekiel's vision. And he says, this wheel corresponds in a way with the sphere of spheres called the universe. The great wheel which many of us see in the sky today is not so much a wheel as one may think in such terms, but rather a place made like a wheel. The like of this wheel, like plane, was never seen before. The similar Ezekiel's wheel is a masterpiece of mechanics. His vision of the wheel included hints on the great wisdom of Almighty God Allah that really he is the maker of the universe and reveals just where and how the decisive battle would take place in the sky. Ezekiel saw wheels in the middle of a wheel. This is true. The universe in the universe. These are the words from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. It is made up of revolving spheres. There are wheels in the wheel. The present wheel shaped plane, known as the mother of planes, is one half mile by one half mile. That is 2,640 across and 2,640 square all around. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said in the lectures of the theology of time that it's one mile straight down to the center. So that means it's like a concave and oval-like, but it is awesome. And, and he said it was dreadful to look at. 
So it is the largest mechanical made object in the sky. It is a small human planet. He also stated that a whole new civilization is on that wheel. Now this is very fascinating. When I looked up Ezekiel as a result of making my diagram, I, I was very, very stunned to find that the very first chapter of Ezekiel, which describes how he was called by the river Shabar in the land of the Chaldeans or in ancient Babylon, no? that he saw um, like this light coming so dazzling, like a whirlwind, it says, out of the north. And it was enfolding, it said, in light and in fire of the color of amber. And everyone knows that amber is a resin that is hardened and contains the colors of a yellow uh, um, orange tone. And we recently uh, saw photos that were taken and videoed by a Mr. Uh, Diaz in Tepotzlan in Mexico at one of our conventions approximately a year or so ago. And he brought these dazzling photos that gave proof that the Honorable Minister Farrakhan truly had that experience on the wheel in the same place. This photographer, nearly in the same year, he photographed this particular object that had the color of amber. Now, the further description of Ezekiel goes on and on, and by the time you reach the 16th verse of the first chapter, Ezekiel says what he saw were these four living creatures, and they all had the appearance of a man. Now, just pay attention to this. A man operating the wheel. Those that are with him are men. Though they're described with wings, up under their wings are hands. Isn't that something? And they have feet, like kind of like burning brass, it said. And then it says that above the firmament of this object, it was like the color of a terrible, these are the words from Ezekiel, uh, verse 22, first chapter, a terrible crystal. So I wanted to know what was this terrible crystal. And it gives a reference later down on the 26th verse, and it indicates that when you looked up, above the firmament, which was this terrible crystal, there was a throne. And on the throne was the appearance of a man. That is why Ezekiel's vision is absolutely tantamount to being able to describe the phenomenon of the mother's plane because Master Farad Muhammad's first and greatest sign when he appeared in 1930 was to point out this miraculous uh, plane, which is the mother's wheel, and the rest of the information that has been shared with us about what is on that wheel. And imagine the Honorable Minister Farrakhan had an opportunity to be taken by a little wheel into the main mother's wheel to have the experience of communicating directly with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad so that there would be no doubt in our minds that this is real, that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad lives and he's on another plane of existence, <laughs> mentally, physically, and spiritually. Now, the commission was appointed, and look at how interesting this was. I stated that the last 28 years, I have been studying how to present my study and my research, inspired from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's words, how I would have an opportunity to present that. And it has been exactly 28 years to this year since the departure of the messenger. And now, on top of it, the first chapter of Ezekiel, which describes this phenomenon, 28 verses of chapter 1. The very next chapter, chapter 2, it says, Ezekiel commissioned. It uses the word commissioned. And it has exactly 10 verses. And that, to me, is comparable to what the Honorable Minister Farrakhan, son of man, another son of man, he says, go to the rebellious house of Israel. They are stiff-headed and rebellious. And he said, and don't pay attention to their mean faces and their harsh words. You go and you teach them. Anyway, I am with you. I am there to back you up. Look at that. 
And then he commissions, it says Ezekiel commissioned, and he commissioned the nine commissions. And now with the tenth commission, the brain occupies exactly the number of verses that you read when Ezekiel is commissioned in the second chapter. The next most important part, I mentioned earlier that there are 40 questions and answers to lesson number two. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that that was uh, guiding us to the making of a man, a new man, the son of man. And that's where the son of man appears. There are exactly 40, 40 chapters to the beginning of the construction, re, listen to this, restructuring, reconstitution, reorganization of the temple that would be set up in the millennium age. And that then brings the number of chapters of Ezekiel to 48. I am telling you, brothers and sisters, from my own experience, every single day, every morning when I rise up for prayer and study my Quran and study the lessons and study the Bible or points of references that may come to me, that I'm continually receiving new and information that is so powerful that I can hardly write it down, I can hardly retain it um, in my mind, but I want that same spirit to come to you and be inspired with the same assignment. I'm not studying anything any different from any one of you, any one of us. So I wanted to point that out because I think that that's very, very significant. The, the next uh, aspect of my presentation has to do with a diagram and how this wheel in a wheel concept uh, came to me. Now I've quoted what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has said. So I'm going to take my pointer and I also have a marker board here so that may Allah guide me to present this next portion of my presentation in a way that uh, you will have understanding. We're now going to focus on this diagram. At the top, a wheel within a wheel. So with my previous explanation, you can now connect to Ezekiel, the messenger's words, and the minister's vision. It says the Supreme Wisdom Lessons Diagram 1. This is the way we start. In the center of this wheel of color, representing the seven colors of the rainbow, and the seven colors of the rainbow are mentioned as a bow that was seen above the sapphire throne in Ezekiel in 26. And there was also the bow that comes after the rain, so it's like the rainbow. So we know the refraction of light through a prism will give us these seven colors of the rainbow. Now the center represents the universe. And recall that the honorable Elijah Muhammad stated in the book, Message to the Black Man, that the creation of this wheel was made like a universe in a universe, and it's constantly pulling up things into our view. So we have the flag of Islam, which is the universal flag. We have the crescent moon in its first quarter. We have the five-pointed star against a red sun uh, background. Now, if you look closely, at this um, flag, you will see that the star has five points. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that that represents our five uh, senses. Now I'm going to take us a little bit deeper into what I think we can uh, understand from this. These two points dissect the circle so that we count five, six, seven seven points in this center of the sun. Now around this are seven colors of the rainbow radiating out. Now before I go on to the explanation of what those seven colors represent, look down here. Six sets of lessons equals 154 questions and answers divided by seven equals 227 formula for pi. Now you know if you multiply 22 by 7, you can come back to the whole figure of 154. So the perfection 
of the zero or the perfection of the move into a full circle is only arrived then if we use a fraction and not if we use the decimal. Okay? So the 53 is incomplete without adding the God himself. So he is like the one in front and guiding. So this supreme wisdom comes like that to us. It is a circle within a circle of the sphere of his wisdom. He initiated himself in the beginning. And how did he do that? And this is where I wish for your attention to see if you understand this. Where did pi originate from? As you know, the universe is the spirals, circles upon circles, the universe within universe, spheres within spheres, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad pointed out. God began in the making of himself in darkness, a light of himself. But the Honorable Elijah Muhammad pointed out in the theology of time that he um, first had to draw a diameter of himself. Then after he drew the diameter, then he made a sphere or a circle to encompass that which his brains conceived within that circle of knowledge that he himself was creating. Now, <clears throat> he said nobody, nothing can come into existence unless it comes out of that circle or body of wisdom of the God's first creation of himself. So therefore, I use this sphere, this sphere, this circle, and it will enlarge in the next diagrams, and more material will be added to the colors of the rainbow that you see here. So if pi itself originates with God, then pi is the perfect mathematical equation to prove that our lessons that were designed and given to us by God is the continuation of wisdom of worlds out of worlds of a new world of thought into the building of a new kingdom based upon the principles of mathematics so that mathematics is Islam, Islam is mathematics, it is eternal, it is infinite, it goes on and on and on. And the scientists could not see an end to his wisdom. They all had to fall down, the 24 scientists, because they could not see an end to the great wisdom of Master Farad Muhammad. Now, another um, example I'm going to give you here is that this color wheel is the main diagram that opens up to the rest that will be shared with you perhaps in another tape. If the five-pointed star represents our senses, we also can derive our Islamic studies. How is that? We have five pillars of Islam. We have the five theoretical beliefs and the five uh, practices of Islam. We have our five daily prayers to which we add, if you take these two points, uh, two more prayers, which really brings the number to seven. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that when you rise in the night, you should recite another prayer or even another prayer in the night time added to your five daily prayers that would bring the number to seven. Another very fascinating thing is that we can find the flag of Islam, the flag of Islam in the Bismillah, the opening Bismillah and the Bismillah statement over 113 surahs. And one would say, how do you do that? Well, I'm going to go to the chalkboard. When we say Bismillah, bis Bismillah, okay, not too good, but Bismillah, equals seven letters, okay. Then in the next part of the statement, it's Rahman, equals six letters. And Rahim equals six letters. Okay, that is the opening Bismillah, 
in Al-Fatiha, and it's over all of the surahs as we know, except Surah 9. What do you see as you look at these numbers? Do you see any relativity to the histories that we are taught about the sun, the moon, and its separation from the earth? All right. It is this way. Seven, six. All right. Seventy-six trillion, seventy-six T, seventy-six trillion years ago, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that the sun came into uh, its present existence uh, in our solar system. So we have 76 trillion years ago for the sun. And then I'm surrounding 66. Okay, we know what happened 66 trillion years ago. That was the moon explosion. Now we can do something more with these numbers because we have its relevance to the earth, the planet. And by the way, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad answers the question in, in um, lesson number one, uh, question and answer nine, which one and nine is a 19 again. <laughs> but if you put that together, uh, he says that the sun, the moon, and the star are planets. That's the original form that they are coming out of planets. And now we can see because the moon was once a part of the earth. Now, how do we get earth out of this? Take these two numbers, six, six. Six plus six equals 12. The moon dropped or went up 12,000 miles high. If we multiply six times six, we get 36. And 36 was the amount dropped of the earth when she separated from the moon 36,000 miles. So in the Bismillah, and this is the beauty of the methodology that we were taught, you can take letters, numbers, words, you can combine them in all kinds of ways and you will get a deep root underlying uh, teaching other than what you're seeing on the surface. So you can go as deep, deep, deep as you can go. Mathematics is the key. It's interesting, I just happened to see this. If six and eight and three and four, 48, okay, that represents something else, but in application to what we've been studying about a wheel and a wheel, I, we pointed out that Ezekiel makes up 48 chapters, which goes into the make of this wheel that has never been made before. And God then is identified as being seen in the clouds and that uh, the hearts of people will be, you know, perplexed and all kinds of uh, disasters will befall the planet when they look up and see the Son of Man coming down from the heavens. Now, um, going back, I wanted to show you. So we have the flag of Islam, number per number, sun, moon, and the earth, and its um, declination to 36,000 miles out of its original pocket. Now we will go back. I'll leave that there for a moment. Now let us go back here. Out of the sphere or circle, in the circle, our national flag, the universe, Islamic uh, a studies base can come out of this, the Holy Quran's uh, mathematical code of 19. What I did, was take the seven colors of the rainbow and make in each one of these quadrants entering into the circle sphere here and you will put in, it's not marked here, 22 sections of the lesson so that every day, and this is the reading program that I will recommend, it's very easy, 22 and color tab each day you can choose the colors that you wish to represent, but each day choose a color tab that, and in that period of time, every member of the family will read 22 parts of the lessons. You just read it, 22 from student enrollment, and then you'll go over and you'll hit 22 somewhere in the actual facts. And then you go down from actual facts, you will count another 
22, and that will take you into lesson number one. Then the next sequential lesson is lesson number two, then the 34 problems, and English lesson number C1. When you separate and find the 22, 22, seven times in the lessons, you will read in one week 22 parts of the lesson per day until you just read them through once a week. You can repeat that. Pretty soon, you will have memorized by heart without, you know, too much difficulty. And you just read them. You don't have to stop and just keep reciting it over and over. It all depends on you. But at least minimal requirement is to read 22 parts of the lesson each day. And each day will correspond uh, to a different color. Now, in the 13 instructions, to get familiar with them and read, you would expand your seven days reading assignment by reading two paragraphs of the 13 instructions per day. As you read these uh, two on Sunday, or the last day, it will be one, which is the 13th paragraph. Now I will erase this. I think I have just about completed the explanation here that I wanted to accept. I'm going to say that is amazing. There is a book called The Temple in Man. Some of you, you know, may have access to it. But in that book, it tells you through a scholar, Libanetz from France, who studied many, many years at the Temple of Luxor. And remember the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, study the monuments in Egypt. Well, he made a, a, a very lengthy study of the Luxor Temple and the reliefs of the way that the pharaohs were etched and carved, you know, into the wa temple walls. And it was exactly the ancient Egyptians who utilized these two principal formulas that I pointed out today, the number 19 and 227 as a fraction. And they did what you call quadratures. And in these quadratures, they measured the pharaoh's head all the way down to his feet. And they utilized either or 19 quadratures or the pi fraction of 22 seven. So we'll talk more on that uh, later. But what I wanted to put up on the board now goes back to the beginning uh, of the t August 23rd and the presentation made by the chairperson, uh, Dr. Abdul um, Alim. And what he put on the screen was fascinating. It kept flashing. Whoops, are we going to see this? Okay. Atonement. Okay, atonement and then commission. And by using this methodology, I kept looking and looking, and I said, oh, wow. I said, atonement has nine letters, and commission has ten letters. And of course, adding them together, you have 19. And I said, my goodness, everything is absolutely coded. I mean, we can't get away from it. Whatever we do, there is a coded language that is embedded in the presentation itself. And in the word commission, if you break it up, it says, come, come, to, the mission. So we are being asked by God, through his representative, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, to come to the mission. What is the mission? It is the resurrection of our mentally dead people. To come to the mission, come, uh, mission how? Through atonement, which is an atone, which can be then mathematically and musically scaled. Because beneath all of this, we have diagrams that will show you that underlying the codes is a musical scale of sound. But atonement, to be at one, with whom? With God first, and with yourself, and then with those around you. So now, look at what else you can do. 
This is with our children too. It makes it like games to play, but very interesting. Come, I, mit, take your word up here, commit, mint. Interesting. So we want to come to the mission to be committed to the service mm -hmm, of Almighty God, Allah, through the working out of self, and then um, everything else will fall into place. Okay, so there's your 19. So the signature of God is on the commission. <laughs> now the next and final part of my presentation today will go this way. He also put on the board in the very beginning, Dr. Aline, he pointed out that the um, organization of the committee, okay, for 17... 76 Constitution and the July 4th Declaration of Independence from 1776. Now this is a very interesting discovery. The Savior came 1930 and he brought with him the code in himself and he had already prepared a body of knowledge and wisdom to share. If you take the lessons, one, five, Four, the code of the lessons, and you add it to 1776, you will get the year, exactly 1930, when Master Farad Muhammad came. So I'm going to leave you shortly with this thought and with these words. If this presentation has had some meaning for you to see the beauty and the wisdom that we were given in the supreme wisdom lessons of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and to be back on track again and follow the guidelines and instructions of the Honorable Minister Farrakhan. I hope that this has helped to widen your comprehension and understanding of the value of this most beautiful assignment and opportunity that we have to move from the left 286.1 pyramid inches to go right, 286.1 pyramid inches, which takes us into all of the beautiful studies of the Holy Quran itself. As I entered into this day, which is August uh, 28th, I opened the Quran for guidance, and I marked the place, and it takes us right back to the Honorable Minister Farrakhan's instructions to us recently on that day, August 23rd, about the importance of prayer. And I opened to Surah 17, Section 9, and it says, Truth will prevail. And the focus is on prayer. And the focus is on being truthful. And I would like to close in my presentation today by reading that section, beginning with verse 78. Keep up prayer from the declining of the sun till the darkness of the night and the recital of the Quran at dawn. Surely the recital of the Quran at dawn is witnessed. And during a part of the night, Keep awake by it, beyond what is incumbent on thee. Maybe thy Lord will raise thee to a position of great glory. And to say, my Lord, make me enter a truthful entering, and make me go forth a truthful going forth, and grant me from thy presence an authority to help me. And say, the truth has come, and falsehood vanished. Surely falsehood is ever bound to vanish. And we reveal of the Qur'an that which is a healing and a mercy to the believers. And it adds only to the perdition of the wrongdoers. And when we bestow favors on man, he turns away and behaves proudly. And when evil afflicts him, he is in despair. Say, everyone acts according to his manner.
But your Lord best knows who is best guided on the path. I thank you for your attention as I leave you the greetings of peace and paradise and prayers for our success to be accepted by God. Assalamu alaikum.